All right, so I mentioned earlier that one of the important things uh, on your pressure washer is to make sure you have a downstream injector. A lot of the pressure washers that you're gonna buy for residential use will have a built-in soap tank or a built-in injector. Injectors are, are also called downstreamers. Uh, that would be the professional uh, term that we use uh, in, the, in the professional side of the industry, but a downstreamer. Here's what a professional downstreamer would look like. This would go in line. There's typically going to be an arrow right there showing you which way the flow is going. This arrow is going that way. So pressurized water coming in, pressurized water going out. And I apologize, this is dirty. We're a working company here. I just took this off of one of the trucks. And this pickup tube will go into your house wash, your chemical of choice. Typically speaking for best results, if you're dealing with a mildew or an algae, you're going to have some bleach in whatever soap you use on there. The reason I like a separate downstream injector as opposed to one that's built in to the to the machine itself is these things are notoriously bad about failing and you can pick these up for 18 20 dollars or so um, any any supply house for pressure washers has a, a downstream injector so when we're using this downstream injector uh, this is going to go into our bucket of whatever house soap we're using and as I mentioned before typically we're going to mix it with a little bit of bleach uh, there's always you know an argument oh bleach is horrible bleach is bad bleach really isn't bad uh, if you've had negative experiences with bleach uh, in the past usually it's because of, of how it was being sprayed or who was spraying it not what was being sprayed uh, it's it's the best biocide that we found for knocking down algae uh, for killing uh, the mildew and the actual biological things that are growing on your house. Because remember, if we don't knock it down, if we don't apply a soap coat and actually go and kill this stuff, then we're going in and having to manually remove it. We're having to manually remove it with pressure. And you're not going to get that manually removed with pressure until you get up into some 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 PSI ranges your chance of causing issues to that property, knocking off paint, carving up wood, blowing out window seals, all of that is much, much higher whenever you go in there and manually try to remove uh, the contaminants that are growing on your property without using a proper soap on there. So that's why it's so important to have a downstream injector uh, on your pressure washer. Now, if you're using the built-in one, whenever that built-in one dies, and these things will die, now, well, basically, it's useless at that point. Uh, you're gonna have to go and send it to the repair shop uh, to get it fixed. And, and these, these in, integral built-in injectors just are notorious for failing. They'll work for, for one or two you know, cycles, then they won't work. Because as a homeowner, we'll forget to wash them out. We'll forget to purge uh, the, the little injectors in there because there's a you know, small little valve and a little tiny hole up in there um, with a spring and, 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 a, and a valve. It works on a Venturi system sucking uh, the chemical through there. When it's not washed out, it gums up or the spring will rust on there, rendering this useless. So whenever this is built into your machine, it's bad for that to be useless. Whenever this is a $20 part, you can go out and buy and replace it. Well, it's a little more palatable. You know, while we're on the, the discussion of, of injectors and soaps and, and using the right chemicals on your house, let's talk for a second about washing. Um, if you go in and take a shower without a soap, you're not really getting your body clean. Would you agree with that? Could we agree there? That if I just jump in the shower and I rinse myself down, I'm not really getting clean. I'm not getting rid of the, the body odor. I'm not getting rid of the bacteria that's growing on me. I'm not getting rid of the soil and the mud that, you know, whenever I was out there working that got ground into me. I'm not really getting that off, or at least I'm not getting it out of the pores. Um, 
whenever I use a soap on my body, I clean up better than if I was just using water. Same thing with our houses. Same things with, with the commercial properties that, that I wash for my customers. We're going to use the appropriate soap and the appropriate detergent to help clean that project. So the cleaners are not a bad thing. Now it's important to choose something phosphate free and friendly to the environment. It's also very important to read the directions on whatever it is you're using. You know, it's not just a case of, of if a little is good, then a lot must be great. Because many of these professional type soaps have been formulated to where just a little bit works. You don't have to go and, and use a ton of it. In fact, it works worse or you're more likely to damage pro, uh, your project if you use too much. We feel that way about bleach usage. Use the proper amount of bleach. A lot of times whenever homeowners have had really bad experiences with pressure washing companies and they've had landscape dye, um, they've had paint discolored, it's because the contractor they're using is using too much chemical. Now, another big concern is how much hose do I have? Uh, we see these smaller machines that are literally meant for automobiles and cars. Um, you know, little small projects with 25 foot of hose. 25 foot of hose is just not very much hose. And what happens then is you are dragging around your pressure washer all day a lot more than, than if you had 50 foot or 100 foot of hose. Uh, this pressure hose is very expensive. You're going to spend typically anywhere from 65 to 125 per additional 50 foot section that you buy. So uh, it is a little pricey to get extra hose. Now, one thing whenever you're taking care of your hose is never ever kink your pressure washing hose. Don't do that. These things will typically have steel wires in there, and if you kink it, you are seriously compromising uh, the wire wrapping on the inside, and it will wind up bursting there where you've kinked it. It might not burst immediately, but rest assured, somewhere down the road, it will burst there. Another really important thing that I see uh, that needs to happen with pressure washers is whenever you're getting it ready to use, whenever you're going and priming it up, uh, each and every time you need to hold your trigger open and make sure that water is squirting through your gun or your lance or your trigger gun or your wand, whatever the terminology you like to use on that. That's going to make sure that the pump is flooded out and you've got plenty of water in the pump and in the hose because if you start it dry, it can cause severe damage to the pump and shorten the lifespan on that. So make sure your pump is full of water and water is flowing out of the pressure hose and out of the washing lance, the washing gun, before you ever fire the engine up. Also, make sure you use the proper fuel in your pressure washer. This new ethanol junk is really hell on on pressure washer engines uh, on any of these small engines ethanol fuel is really tough on there if you're going to leave this sat up for any amount of time more than a week or so i recommend running the gas out of your engine if you have a honda engine that's very very easy you take the gray lever um I'm sorry, the, the black lever that's under the gray lever, and you turn the gas off, run the engine until it quits. That means there's no more gas in the carburetor to gum up and get nasty. Additionally, if you're going to keep fuel in the fuel tank, consider going in there with some type of uh, gas stabilizer, like a Stabil is, is one brand name of it, and pour that in there because otherwise your gas is just going to get real varnishy, it's going to stink, and it's going to mess up your carburetor. Now to recap what we've talked about in, in this video series here, if I had the perfect residential type pressure washer, um, I would be going at something three and a half to four gallons a minute. I would also want something capable of at least 3,000 PSI. This is probably going to put me somewhere in the 
700 to 900, maybe even $1,200 range for a consumer grade type unit. Um, treated correctly, the pump oil needs to be checked inside the pressure pump. Uh, always get the air out of the system uh, and don't overheat the motor. Uh, it should really give you, you know, a couple of years, maybe three, four years of great service before you need to replace the pressure pump. And keep in mind, you will probably have to replace the pressure pump at some time. If you get a decent Honda engine, uh, most likely the engine will stay safe. The engine will be fine. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us by email. You can find it here on the end slides. Also, if you want to hire a professional pressure washing company, feel free to look at our directory at spraywashpro.com. Again, that is spraywashpro, no spaces, dot com. We have a network of professionals across the country that might be just right to help you. But if you're also a homeowner, feel free to tackle this project yourself. We'd be happy to help you along with any little advice we can give there as our time and schedule permits. Also, we're gonna be discussing a troubleshooting your pressure washer uh, coming up in our next video, uh, talking about common things that are burning your pressure washer up and why it's not working. Uh, so look forward to that here, probably coming out in two or three more days, and uh, we'll have that here in the Spray Wash Academy website. Again, thank you so much for your time. Have a blessed day.